Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Currency of Anarchy. My name is Josh Davis. If you'd like to find us uh, while we're doing our live shows, you can find us at Cur of Anarchy at YouTube. Uh, that is uh, Mondays at 9 o'clock Eastern. And you can find the final products uh, Wednesday nights, uh, Wednesday afternoons at 3 o'clock at uh, youtube.com slash user slash voluntary virtues. And if you have any comments for us during the live show, please let us know in the Facebook pages. Uh, the Facebook page, I guess. There's only one page. So, um, yeah, uh, I have three guests with me tonight. Um, I'm very gratified to uh, see so many guests. Thank you very much, guys. I have Corey Hastings. Want to say hey? Hey, what's up? Hey. Uh, I have John uh, from the New Sons and Daughters of Liberty. How are you, John? Good, man. How's it going? Good. Hey, you didn't plug my uh, site. Oh, jeez. Yeah, Corey. Corey has uh, Ancom Logic, probably one of the funniest pages I've ever seen, honestly. Thanks. Um, I yeah, try. no problem. <laughs> Been that active lately, but you know I haven't got a lot of content. I I got to talk more with Ancoms to get that content. <laughs> and I have uh, Michael Freeman, and he's from uh, what what was it from again? I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, don't tread on anyone. Yeah. Hey, thanks for having me back. Man. Love that page. Yeah. Don't tread on anyone. That's one of my favorite pages, man. <laughs> hey, th thanks for having me back, Josh. Absolutely, Michael. Thanks for coming back. I appreciate it. Uh. So, yeah, we've got uh, kind of like a laundry list of things to go through tonight. And uh, the first thing uh, we want to talk about, I guess, is education and along with that uh, etymology and language and logic. Um, so, but basically, uh, let's just talk about education in general. Um, I, th I think everyone across the board uh, believes in education, I believes it's a good thing. The problem is when it's taken out of context and um, given to a coercive uh, state, because, or in any case, uh, like when it turns from actual education and enlightening people, and it turns into more like an authoritarian and control um, mechanism. Um, but does anyone want to expand on that? I would like to start with. Um Simply, simply this, um, the word academic, uh, the word academic comes from the Greek for uh, a academia, I believe it's something like that, and that's what our, our, uh, our word academy comes from, you know, do you go to academy or whatever, and the, the academy was, in the Greek, it was, basically, it was a few very smart people and they would just sit around the town square or the park or whatever, and all the, everybody who wanted to learn from them would just gather around and listen to them talk. And they would do almost like what we're doing right now, sit in a circle and talk about different topics, explore different topics, and everybody would learn from each other. Nobody was really the teacher, you know. There was no such thing as a teacher that would say, you do this and you do this and these are your exercises and send your report in tomorrow. You know, you would, you would simply talk to each other and learn from each other and that was the academy. That's brilliant. That's very brilliant. Wow. So that, that's what I would like to lead off with, just, just that word academy. You know, academic um, academy, and you know, if if you're an academic, an academic does not, you know, study and and be indoctrinated under another person. An academic does not do, you know, whatever assignment they're told exactly the way that they're told, and just you know turn in a paper tomorrow morning. An academic studies the the intellectual people around them, learns from them, talks to them gains whatever information that they think is valid and you know, if you think that whatever someone told you, if you think that that information is not true, then you disregard that and you go for the truth that, you know, as you see it. Right. And, and, you, and you try to further your area of study. If you're, 
if you're an academic in the area of archaeology and you believe that Christopher Columbus really did not discover America, then you disregard that and you look into who really did discover America. Right? That's what an academic does. As a so much study. more like uh, like solo study or um, like individual um, cognitive yeah. ability, really. Now, now if, if you look at, look at the word scholar, the word scholar comes from school, and a school is a collective. A school is where you have you know, you have a one teacher who's indoctrinated on the subject who is teaching, you know, 50 or 60 other people, this is the way it is. You do it my way because this is the correct way. And everybody follow me because I know what's right and you don't because you're stupid little pupils and I'm the school. You know, I'm, I'm the teacher. That is a school. That, that's a scholar. A scholar follows what they're told and follows a collective. An academic makes their own path based on the information given. Yeah. As you guys know, I go to community college right now, so that's like the, uh, I'm like the epitome of what he just, just explained, right? Um, when it comes to education for me personally, um, you know, I went to public school when I was a kid. On, on the flip side, um, I was a ward of the state for the majority of my childhood, you know, DCYF, and not only in state schools, but also in state housing and, and, and living. So then I joined the military and was even even further given state education and separated from the military, and now I currently go to state fucking school. And uh, yeah. uh, I, have, I have a very sour taste in my mouth when it comes to education. The, everything that I've ever learned is that's mattered, at least, has been on my own accord. I think structured education is uh, is kind of a poor idea, and I think John over here could really attest to that. Yeah, I was just waiting for a chance to jump in. I didn't want to, um, you know, um, I didn't want to cut anybody off. But uh, what Corey said was pretty much the, the main reason why I yanked my daughter out of public school. Um, my wife and I, we'd, we'd wanted to homeschool because um, I, I know I've seen how bad the public education system has gotten. And, um, so we said, well, we'll stick her in kindergarten. I mean, how, how bad can kindergarten be? And we'll take this year to, you know, research our options and see what, you know, what, what we could do for, for homeschooling. <coughs> While she was while she was in kindergarten, she learned absolutely nothing. She was absolutely miles ahead of her peers in reading. Not only that, but they didn't even want to push her. They said, well, well, first off, they told us that, that we were teaching her reading the wrong way, which I, I, I don't know is a, a wrong way to read, but I taught my daughter to read the same way my parents taught me to read, which was, these letters make these sounds, you put them together, you, you see a word you don't know, you sound it out. And I think that's how we all learn to read, is, is you sound it out. That's how I learned to read. Yeah, and <laughs> they are actively teaching in public schools now, do not teach your kids to sound it out. They absolutely hate that. And what they want now is this bullshit sight word thing, where they want kids to memorize words, and if they see a big word that they don't real that they don't uh, recognize, they want them to chop it up into smaller words and pick out sight words. It's it's insanely convoluted. And, that doesn't and make sense. What what the fuck does that even? What's a sight word? <laughs> a, a sight word is a sight word is is just that. A, a sight word <laughs> is a word like say um, dog, where the kid sees d o g. And just mentally knows, just remembers that the word is dog. Okay, so you said that if there's a long word that they don't understand, they have to chop it up into sight words. What are the sight words in Albuquerque? <laughs> good, good, good question. <laughs> good question. That that would be great to to ask one of these common core idiots. That, uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> so, so they do that, and then I'm, I'm sure you've all seen the math problems that have been posted online everywhere that yeah. don't make any any sense at all. No. Well, I've um, I've never I've never fact checked any of them to be quite honest. <coughs> I uh, well, I'm not going to get into my my personal stuff, but I I, I don't really have interest in a child of mine who's in school right now and, and I guess Marley, you know, John's kid, I'm I kinda like her better than John and she's a little more of an <laughs> than, than John could ever hope to be. She's but, uh, cooler than me, take his word for it. Yeah, she is. Um yeah, yeah, I uh I've never really fact checked any of it or seen any validity behind any of these common core math problems that I see on on the I internet. Actually I actually have fact checked um, some of them. Yeah. Uh, there's a few that I've found that that were totally bogus. But yeah. There's also there's some that I have found that are 100 percent true and they're absolutely fucking bizarre. You know. My, my problem here is that I'm not only not gonna check. I'm not only not gonna trust the validity, but I'm not even gonna check a link from you know PatriotPost.com. Or whatever, where most yeah. of these, these links are coming from. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. You know? Well, well I've, the, 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 I've oh, go gone ahead. to some of, like, uh, you can go to, um, if, if you find a right source for one of those, and I'm not saying, you know, patriotpost.com or, you know, uh, Daily Cause or, you know, whatever, but there's, every once in a while, you'll find one that it has an actual link to a school curriculum that you can find on a PDF file, and that's a legitimate school curriculum, and they will show those things on there. You know? Sure, right, right. Yeah, that's what I that's what I would need to see. I've just never really had the the uh, person. Well, here's here's the thing with with math is um, the the beauty with math is that you don't really have to fact check anything. Math is math <laughs> is math. Like we all all here, we all know that nine plus six equals 15. We we just know it because because 9 plus 6 is 15. It doesn't fucking matter how you how you cut it up. 9 and 6 is 15. They're teaching they want they're dumbing it down now and and they want the kids to take okay, you have not they want to do everything by 10 to make it easier. So they do okay, 9 and 6. You take one from the 6, move it to the 9, make it 10 plus the 5 remaining. And the an the answer to that is no. <laughs> yeah. What I'm saying, they, they may, they're making these kids take three and four steps in a simple math problem that's solved in one step, all for the sake of dumbing it down and making it easier. But well, hey, check easy. this out, guys. Um, this this is no bullshit. Um, this I experienced this myself before before I graduated high school. Uh, I think I was in tenth grade at the time. When when Bush first got in office, and he started his No Child Left Behind thing, Clinton. this was a common core of back then, right? And back then, I, I remember, like, as soon as this, this No Child Left Behind thing came out, you know, all of a sudden one day, I'm sitting in math class, and the teacher is sitting up there giving us an, a lecture in front of the, you know, the drawing board, and he's like, well, you know, technically, 2 plus 2 can equal 5 <laughs> if you do it right. And I immediately, I just got out of my chair. I'm like, what the fuck did you just tell me? 2 plus 2 <laughs> And I, I swear to God, this is a true story. And he's like, well, technically, 2 plus 2 can be 5. I'm like, okay, I want you to draw up there on the board 2 plus 2 equals 5 right now. Draw it on the board. He's like, I'm sorry, Corey. You are interrupting the class. I'm like, well, I don't care if I'm interrupting the class. I want you to draw on the board 2 plus 2 equals 5. <laughs> He's like, well, it's not that simple. I'm like, okay, then then how... How difficult is it for two plus two to equal five? Then use your common core and make it simple. Yeah. Well, his answer, he he said basically, he's like, well, I don't remember the exact equation that you need for that, but it it is a fact that two plus two can be five. 
And I was like, I just said, okay, wait a minute. So you said an equation. An equation means either it's 2 plus 2 equals 5, or else there's a further equation involved in it. If there's a further equation involved, then what do you mean? 2 plus 2 plus 1 equals 5? Or, <laughs> or what the fuck kind of bullshit are you trying to tell me here? I, I swear to God, he kicked me out of the class, and I got suspended for the day. Yeah, that's bad. Uh, that is no joke. That is 100% true story. That happened to me. And, well, that's the thing is they're actually trying to teach this crap in the school that, um, you know, 2 plus 2 can equal 5 or that it's not necessarily wrong. They just want to see the work. <laughs> they want to see how you got 2 plus 2 equals 5. Frederick Nietzsche may disagree with you. <laughs> but, but this was before Common Core, though. This was like, this was back when Bush first got in office. This what yeah. we're talking like back in, yeah. back in 2000, 2001, when right. they introduced that no child left behind. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, well, they're, they're still doing it now. You know, they're, they're just continuing that and calling it Common Core, and, and they're, they're really expounding on that now. Yeah, they're, well, they're not just continuing it; they're making it ten times worse. Oh, absolutely. Which they always they always do. You know, anytime anytime uh, the government introduces an absolutely horrible policy that destroys society as we know it, then they go ahead and a few years later expand on it and make it ten times worse. Anytime the government introduces a policy, they destroy society as we know it. <laughs> they pretty much do. Yeah. And then and then a few years later they expand on that policy and make it ten times worse. That's the purpose, man. A government's the, the 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 sole design of the idea is to expand. Yep. I think and in my opinion, <laughs> evidence leads me to believe. Yeah. And that, that is um, why you know, all, all these uh, so-called conservatives out there that are, well, we need a smaller government. We need a smaller government. Well, look at what your representatives are doing. Every single fucking thing they do is expanding the government. So who are you to tell me we need a smaller government? Oh, but if you don't vote for Bush, well, you're, it's your fault that Obama won, you know, or whatever. Fuck yeah. off. War, war is the health of the state, and if yep. anything that you're you, – you might be able to con talk a, a, a conservative, not that they, they know what that word means, but you may be able to talk a conservative out of everything else, but not the troops, man, not the nationalistic uh, Never. Never. border security ideas. You're not going to get them out of that, and that is – Oh, what? So you, you don't support the troops? <laughs> you don't support the troops? Yeah. Oh my God! Oh my God! You're hanging your flag upside down. You deserve to die. <laughs> yeah. You hang I your fought, flag I upside fought for down. Your, I fought for your freedom of speech, so you better shut the fuck up and put yeah. that T-shirt away, <laughs> or whatever. You 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 hang your flag upside down. I I hope a fucking Navy SEAL breaks in your house in the middle of the night and shoots you in the head <laughs> for hanging your flag upside down because we fought for your freedom of speech. I have been asking this question for days on New Sons and Daughters of Liberty, probably weeks, and not one person can answer it, and that's how do the troops protect my freedom? Not, <laughs> not one. I, I, we must have lost about 50 likes in the last couple of weeks, all of them you know, conservative neocons, and I'll, yeah, I'll get to them in a minute. But we, we lost a lot of likes. I, I asked the question, how do they protect our freedoms? And nobody can answer it. I've been on other pages supporting pages, asking them how do they support our freedoms. Not one can answer. I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you how they protect your freedom. Because if it wasn't for the troops shipping the, the opium poppies <laughs> onto the <laughs> CIA you know, C-117s to ship them into Mexico, bring the drugs across the border, then who? Why? Why would we even need to close our border? You know, the the Mexican drug cartels would go out of business. Why would we even need to close our border? 
what what I understand is uh, that it, when uh, a troop goes through training, they're basically taught not to think, right? Because they're just told to take an order, right? Uh, but like, if you're really meant to process something and understand uh, and take in knowledge, then what you should be doing is take that knowledge or take that uh, you know that command and actually process it and see if it actually makes sense. And then take that idea, act on it. Take that yeah. idea and process it based on what you know to be true. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That would be logical, but no, they're they're actually taught not to think. You know. Yeah. I mean? uh, uh, as a matter of fact, they they have a phrase for that in the military. What's it, what it, what what they call that? Um. So uh, you're you're not paid to think. You're paid to uh. What 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 do they call? It? Any nobody here has been in the military. Michael was. Uh, no, Michael. Yeah, Michael was. Well, they 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 tell you, you know, if you if you ever question an order, they tell you, well, you're not paid to think, soldier. You're paid to what follow orders or something. Well, yeah, pretty much. That's it. Uh, yeah, like when when you sign up for the military, you're signing your freedom away anyway. Yeah. You know, and uh, so you know this, you know, and then when you, it's you know uh, that natural instinct is taken out of you eventually. Um, but yeah, that would be called the trivium. Have you guys heard of that? Um, the military trivium? No, no, no. The, no, no, no. Trivium. Oh, uh, trivium. I thought you said trivium. Uh, uh, trivium. Now, what, idea, what does that mean, the trivium? The idea is it's uh, grammar, logic, and uh, grammar, logic, rhetoric. So basically it's uh, you take in knowledge, that's grammar, you know, take in whatever information... And uh, then in logic, you process it. You, you know, s filter out bad information and see if any of the good information aligns with what you know uh, and what your morals are and all that. And then you come up with rhetoric, and it's basically your output. And if, if you were basically, if this process were to be used to create an object, then your object is created in rhetoric. So... It's like input processing output. It, you know, uh, th that's this is this is what um this would go along with what what my opening statement was, but about an academic versus a scholar. Very much so. Yes. And an app an, an ac academic would take their input, they would process it through you know through logic based on what they know to be true, and then they would output whatever they know to be true based on you know the the input. Input versus logic would valid, validate their output. Uh, on the other hand, a scholar would just take the input and just parrot it out like this is the truth because they told me this is the truth. That's what a scholar does. Right. To me, a yeah. scholar a scholar has little to no validity whatsoever. I would I would much rather listen to an academic. When, when you see somebody on the TV saying, oh, I'm an expert in blah, 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 whatever, an expert can suck my fucking cock two ways to Sunday, you know, because well, they, they don't think for themselves. No, it depends on how they learned it. That's the problem. We don't know until they actually did the research on their own as opposed to just taking it in in a lecture hall or something. That's, that's let, let me give you an example um, here in it. Uh, uh, from from a martial arts perspective, right? Interesting. Um, I used to be uh, pretty heavy into martial arts when I was younger, and I love Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee is probably he is the greatest martial artist that ever lived, right? If if you ever asked Bruce Lee, uh, you know what would he consider himself an expert or a master? He would say no. Uh, he would say there is no such thing as an expert. There is no such thing as a master. He would say I am a good martial artist. Um, back in the in the sixties, there was there were tons of 
martial arts instructors, they were, you know, all over the country saying, oh, I'm a master of Taekwondo, I'm a master of Hapkido, I'm a master of Karate, I'm a master of Kung Fu, all this, you know, all these masters, they were masters everywhere, masters of this, masters of that. You asked Bruce Lee and he would say, what's a master? He'd be, I don't know what a master is. He'd be like, oh, well, I'm a good martial artist. I could teach you if you want to learn. Yeah. You know, and and those all these masters, they they sent people from all over the country. They sent people to go kick his ass, and not one person could do it ever. Nobody could. You know, he was yeah. the greatest that ever lived. And but he never claimed to be a master. He never claimed to be an expert. He just said, "Yeah, I'm good, and I can teach you." Uh, on the same line, I mean, you could do the same thing with. Uh, Chess players, you know, uh, you, it's an easy game to learn, but a lifetime to master. And you know, there are people that know the ins and outs of chess, but um, you know, it, it, it's different between one player and an, another, and then you have another appointment uh, opponent. You know, it, it's the game changes every time. Oh yeah, definitely. Anyway, uh, I guess it I, may be a little off. I I feel um, when when anyone if the, if anyone claims to be an expert on a subject or a master or you know they claim that they know everything I just immediately I'm like okay this guy's got to be a fucking moron what's what's wrong with him you know the You're, one tr the one true king doesn't need to claim that he is the one true king I, exactly. You know, you you will admit that you know you will admit that you have flaws. If if you're really if you're that good at something, if you're that smart about something, you will admit that you're flawed. You will admit that you're you know you have shortcomings. You will admit that there's things that you don't know. You won't claim to be a master or an expert. You'll just be like, uh, yeah, I I know quite a lot about this. Um, I can help you learn. You know, whatever. Yeah, so let's jump topics. Um, I was thinking about uh, doing that stock price crashing idea. Um, so the, the reason why I think that the stock prices will crash, uh, they haven't really crashed yet, um, but I think they will uh, very soon. I mean, we're doing QE4, or at least they're talking about it, um, and they will be doing it. And, QE, QE Infinity and beyond. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just keep on going. Yeah, it's a party, people. <laughs> so, <laughs> and along the same lines, you know, China wants to, uh, or China and Russia are are dropping the dollar or they're in the process of doing that and we're paying um, China gold and silver right now and uh, so it, it doesn't pertain directly to the stock, stock market but um, the inflated dollars will eventually creep into the stock market and so it's gonna jump the price up but then you know once people start pulling out that's gonna crash uh, gold and silver are going to go through the roof. Bitcoin as well, probably. Um, that's my take on it. Um, I assume, for example, Michael, I'll send it to you. Uh, what do you think? Uh, I assume that you had an idea about the stock market and what's going on there. No, actually, this is not not even my area. I mentioned it because because John and his uh, I think his grandfather is John eighty nine. Yeah. Yeah, his his grandfather's really the one who brought it up to us, and yeah. you know John John and I are really into you know Bitcoin and silver, and yeah. well, John John kind of does the silver, I kind of do the Bitcoin, I guess, but yeah, yeah, his grandfather had a lot of good stuff to well stuff that I really didn't understand to say about it to be quite honest, well, but he had ninety okay. years of experience, so yeah. He's he's been saying that you know the market's gonna crash, the market's gonna crash. He's he's been saying this for you know forty years now, but um he's really amped it up lately. Uh, he's really into this thing called the Elliott Wave theory. Um, anyone out there can can Google that and look that up. Uh, the cliff the cliff notes is 
that um, the the market the the way the ups and downs work. Like I'm not really an expert, and I had I had a little trouble following it because I really don't know a whole lot about the stock market. But um, the Elliott Wave theory suggests that yeah, this is going to crash, and um, that we're already in the beginning of it. When it peaked recently at what was it, seventeen two eighty or two seventy nine or something like that. When it peaked and started dropping, what was that last week or so? Um, this is supposed to be the beginning of the end, but I guess we'll see. Interesting. Um, I I know from the uh, the silver and gold perspective that it basically, in my opinion, silver bottomed and gold bottomed. So that's pretty much a correlation right there. If the stock market did peak then we're probably going to see people pull out of that uh, over time and then it's going to seriously drop real quick and going from the silver and gold side it's going to creep up and then it's going to basically take an exponential that that's my perspective yeah that's that, i mean that's pretty much what my grandfather tried explaining to me um, he he claimed that the uh, the gurus that he follows as far as the stock market go all predict that it's going to be a, a pretty massive crash, and it's probably going to last until two, uh, 2022 was the uh, prediction. Now this is just a random prediction. I mean, you might as well like ask a magic eight ball. But um, <laughs> I would disagree <laughs> with that. I would say, is the gold crashing right now? Wait, I haven't watched. It's down. What's it down to right now? Uh, uh, right now, it's uh, 125990 1259 Yeah, actually. Uh, no, the Dow Jones is uh, 16399 Right. You were, he was asking for gold. gold oh, yeah. gold. I'm sorry. You know what? Actually, I would expect that gold would probably uh, start going up within the next two years, maybe. It's it's already started going up. Um, oh, has it already? Last week, and it's gone up this week. So it's it's already starting to go up, in my opinion. And that's my guess, of course. You know what? I think it'll probably balance out for a little bit. If it's already started going up, it's probably going to go back down again, and then you know up a little bit, but then it'll. It'll probably balance out for the next maybe year or two, and then start going up again. But if they're pulling out this another QE, I haven't heard about that. Yeah. If they're pulling out another QE, then it it might shoot up right now. Yeah, I think it will be. See, I was under the impression they were going to start tapering off QE. But um, I, you know, they're, um, they're tapering it off, but you know. Tapering it off. <laughs> <laughs> Major. Tapering. Uh, yeah. Well, just like when they say that they're going to cut government spending, and what they <laughs> do is they they cut a small amount of what they're going to increase it by. <laughs> just just like marijuana decriminalization, right? Oh yeah. But we're still going to send the DEA to your house. <laughs> you know? We're still going to steal your money and your products and probably your car and probably shoot your dog. Yeah. And then so. kidnap your kids and put you in a cage for three years or something. Don't forget flashbangs in the baby crib. Oh, yeah. Well, don't forget just a couple days ago they literally shot a seven-year-old girl in the head on a no-knock raid. Yeah. Oh, I must have missed that. Shit. Oh, yeah. I didn't hear about that. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she was sleeping in her bed. Seven-year-old girl, she was sleeping in her bed. They crashed through the window, shot her in the head, and then went and arrested the parents. That's fantastic. Cool. Yeah. Well, my war on drugs. If it wasn't for the government, who would prevent, you know, the pot smokers from, I don't know, having a actual living child? Pot smokers. Yeah, oh, no, no, oh just say, right? call the FBI, call the DEA. Oh my God, look at! Oh my God, look at what he's doing! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <on> the <coughs> Drone strikes inbound. <laughs> uh, real quick, uh, since we touched upon it, I want to just go over the prices 
um, yeah. if you guys don't mind. So this will be about two minutes. Uh, last time we took this, uh, these prices, it was uh, October 13th, and today is the 20th. Uh, and I took these prices at 8:37 tonight. Silver was 17.49. Tonight it went down a whole nine cents to 17.40. Uh, that 0.5% uh, change. Whoop de do. Nothing. Anyway, gold did go up quite a bit in my opinion, uh, from 12.35.50 to 12.59.90. That's a $24.40 change. That's up 2%. And Bitcoin went down from 390.41 to 378.75. That's uh, a change of $11.66. That's 3%. Um, so, but, but that's not a lot of change. Like you said, Cody. Uh, yeah, Cody, it's Corey. <laughs> Um, it flatlined in a way, all of them. They all kind of flatlined, like silver especially. Um, it's a That was a change of half a percent. That's not a lot. Um, but, yeah, so that's, that's why I think it bottomed out. Like it's, it's going to go up now, like both or all three of these uh, currencies, you know, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> well, I think like, like you're saying about, uh, you know, Silver being on a on a steady, um, I think Bitcoin's kind of doing the same right now. In the past, what three weeks, it, it's increased, and then kind of gone between like 380, 402, whatever, for the past like two weeks. And yeah, you know, I've only yeah. been doing this for a few months now, but from what I understand, just like a year ago. We're we're probably going to be on a, a a gradual upscale from here. Yes, it's going to maybe probably go to like four twenty and then then bounce between like four thirty and four ten for a few weeks and then to four sixty from there, yada yada. Um, and uh, I, I'm excited about Bitcoin. I I really am. It keeps me it keeps me on my toes. Um, silver and gold are. Are really John's area. We kind of we, we, we each kind of handle the other side, and we're both kind of new to to both of them, I think. But uh, you, know, yeah. you taught me about Bitcoin. I taught you about silver. Yeah. Uh, I'm hope I'm hopeful for Bitcoin. I don't know enough about silver to really have have an input. I have bought silver with Bitcoin, and that felt amazing. <laughs> but that's about as much as I can say. That is freedom. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, can I interrupt you guys? Oh, of course, of course, you're going to. We we never really talked about as far as the education. We never really talked about how education would differ in anarchy as opposed to how it does under the state. We, we talked a little bit about education, you know, the way it works now and how that's bad. But how would it be different under the state uh, or under anarchy as opposed to? Under the state. Well, that's the whole thing. Uh, if it's under anarchy, then it's not under anarchy. It's in existence. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, liberty. I guess we would all be like, I guess we would all unschool ourselves. I mean, just the natural yeah. desire to learn. Uh, Larkin Rose summed this up beautifully in a video that he had called uh, The Need for Education. Definitely look that one up. It's a great video. <coughs> but, uh, I love Larkin Rose. He's awesome. Yeah, he's cool. But um, yeah, I mean, if if in the absence of a state, um, there's no compulsory education. There's no compulsory um, packaged, uh, structured schooling to go to. When you need to learn something, you'll learn it. You'll learn about it. You'll you'll find books. You'll find videos. You'll Google. You'll babies, whatever you have. Babies learning what mama is, for example. Yeah, exactly, and that's that's something that Larkin touched on in the video. Is that you know when when you're a baby, you teach yourself a language, and you have nothing to fucking go on. It's not like now. Like if I wanted to learn Chinese now, I at least have English as a base to say, okay, this means that, and that means that, and I I have a foundation to work on. When you're a baby. You have nothing. You have absolutely nothing to work on, and you teach yourself a language, and that's just amazing to me. Yeah. To be honest, my answer, Corey, would be 
<laughs> and this might sound like selfish or something, but I'm not sure that in a free society it is up to me to solve your problems. So however you want to educate your kids, you should you should do what you see fit. If you want to send them to somebody else to do it, that's cool. If you want to Racist. do it yourself, that's <laughs> yeah, that that's cool too. But listen, man, I just drink beer and and talk online, so I'm not sure that I'm in any position to be giving people fucking advice on how to how to bring their children up, or nor is anybody else. You know that that's your decision. And well, clear clearly, you're a white privileged racist. <laughs> I mean, obviously, that discredits everything that you just said. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I mean, you you should just go, just go check your privilege, man. Come back later. I should just go to Harvard and <laughs> take, it to, take it to its full extent, right? I should be a banker and yeah, well, don't work on Wall Street. I think there would be like schools, of course. Um, but uh, I think there would be a lot more uh, homeschooling, like you, you're basically stating. Um, you know, teach your kids the way you want. But if you feel that you're not um, that qualified to school your kids, as it were, then take them to school or something. Or don't. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, if, if people want schools to exist, if there's a demand for this to exist, the market will provide. People yeah. will come up with schools, I think, and yeah. and I'm not really sure where I stand on that exactly. I think that's kind of a slippery slope, to be quite honest. But I, I more advocate the homeschooling, unschooling. Well, I I suppose in a free society, unschooling would be irrelevant. Um, <laughs> I guess I guess self self learning is is probably the best way to go. Well, that's, that that is unschooling. Well, yeah, but unschooling has to do with unlearning things that, you know. No, 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 that's 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 de-schooling. I know there's so many different terms. Yeah, de-schooling means like uh, breaking out of that. Uh, John, I don't need any. I don't need any more isms, guy. <laughs> well, fine. Well, all right. Let let me give my take on it a little bit. My my take is that if if you if you want your kids to learn something. You, you find the people that are in your area, in your neighborhood, who know the things that your children need to know. And the, obviously, you know, from, from the time that they're born until they're like maybe, you know, 10 or 12 years old, you teach them by, by yourself. You, you teach them how to read. You teach them basic math and, you know, all these, you know, basic things. And then, you know, all right, say they're, you know, 12, 13, 14 years old, you want them to learn a skill or they want to learn a skill, you go to the people in your neighborhood who know those skills, you have an academy, not a community college, not a university, you have an academy, like they had in ancient Greece, you have an academy, and they go there and they discuss these things and learn from the people who are interested in similar things. Well, learn from each other. You know, John has really sold me on this point, and it's even it's even only been since Porkfest, so we're talking since June. I was kind of against the unschooling and that whole thing, and and I'm not sure that academies are necessary anymore. Like the most things that I've ever learned in my life were from exactly what we are doing right now from talking this, to other this people. is a form of an academy this we're we're in an academy right now although we're not sitting face to face this is an academy sure this is the modern form of an academy right now uh, and, and you know even this I, I'm not sure that a structure to it I think in order for it to be an academy there would need to be like I don't know maybe a schedule or something no, um, there was there was no schedule in an academy. You just you go and uh, you know bring a sandwich and a glass of wine, and sit down and just talk to people. That's all it was. For me, the best way that I learn is through different things and talking to different people and doing new things. And, and if I was to have this conversation with with Corey, John, and Josh once a week, I don't think that I'm going to learn very much over an extended period of time. 
I'd rather do it with different people in different settings and different scenarios. No, but you're right, uh, because if you only have a limited supply of uh, information in your own brain, then yeah, the only way to learn is to incorporate yourself with other people or to read. I mean, reading is yeah. essential. I, of course. And this is where this is where John can really come in. You know, he unschools his daughter as of what, like five months ago, I think. Like two months. We just started yeah. this year. Oh, September, right, right, right. Yeah. It's been cold for so long here. I'm losing track, man. <laughs> well, that's the, the the beauty about unschooling is that there doesn't have to be a start date. Like my daughter would constantly ask, you know, Daddy, when are we gonna start homeschooling? When are we gonna start this? I said, Baby, whenever you want. What, what, whatever you want to learn, let's go learn it. There doesn't have to be a start date and an end date and testing and grades and blah, 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 blah. Let's just learn. What do you want to learn? Learn it. Whatever your passion is, go after it, and you will learn it. So there's actually no set curriculum. There's no um, itinerary at all, nothing like that? For, for, uns for unschooling specifically, no. There, there are, there is no curriculum. There's no. I mean, you can use a curriculum if you'd like, um, but the, the whole basis of unschooling is just living life, just living life and learning. What you learn every, every day. Uh, for example, my daughter. I mean, when we when we go grocery shopping, she comes with us and she learns about comparing prices and brand names. And when, when I'm cooking in the kitchen, she's right there next to me and she's learning how to you know, make bread and make pasta and make this and make that and stuff like that. Uh, nice. you, just, you just learn every day. You don't, you, you don't need to be sat in a chair and force-fed some drivel from an authoritarian figure. Josh, man, I'm, I'm telling you, um, Marley went to Pork Fest with us, and for the first four days, it was a monsoon, dude. We, we, we lived in a swamp, and she complained less than anybody else. She's a capitalist in the way that she wants to make these like finger this this fingernail painting booth next year at Porkfest for bitcoins and for silver and, and, and she's a good kid and John I can say that John is doing it right so far. She likes frozen a little too much. Other than <laughs> doesn't. But yeah, I mean she's six years old and she already she hates taxes, she can't stand authority, she doesn't like being told what to do. I mean and she's not a bad kid. Like you hear some kids like, Oh, don't tell me what to do, you think they're a bad kid, but she just doesn't want to be bossed around. She's a good kid. Right. Hey, did, did you teach her about uh, did you teach her about uh, taxes by eating a third of her ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but this is a very funny story. Uh, for her birthday, she had gotten a uh, a Walmart gift card. I think it had like ten. It had ten bucks on it. This was so like a year ago. Yeah. Well, this is yeah. This past uh, June. So I take her to, to to Walmart and I say, okay, we can go to the toy section. You have ten dollars. Use it. Use it wisely. If you want a couple of $2 toys, if you want one $10 toy, whatever you want, you have $10 to budget. <laughs> so she grabs a doll off the shelf that was $9.99. <laughs> I knew exactly where this was going. And I said, okay, $9.99, it's under $10. Let's go to the register. And when we got to the register and the, and the lady said, okay, that's going to be $10, whatever, $10.69 or whatever it is. She looked at me like puzzled, like where the fuck did this other seventy cents come from? I it was so, uh, so we had a very interesting uh, conversation on the ride home about taxes and what taxes are, and she was not too happy about that. <laughs> no, and we went up to Pork Fest. Her big thing was uh, we bought something at a store up in New Hampshire on the way there, and. She was puzzled why there was no taxes. I said, well, New Hampshire doesn't charge sales tax on things you buy, unlike, you know, where we live. So now she's all hot for New Hampshire. She wants to move there because there's no taxes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. John, she, she John, where are you from? Yeah. John, where are you yeah. from? Uh, Connecticut. Well, oh, you are? I'm in Massachusetts. <laughs> What's that? John is not from Connecticut. I mean, no, I, oh, okay. I, originally, I'm from New Jersey. I spent most of my life in Rhode Island. Uh, I just moved to Connecticut uh, last year. 
two years ago, sorry. All right, so basically you've lived your entire life in hell on earth. Yeah, basically. Well, I moved to yeah. I moved to Rhode Island when Rhode I was Island's like... Rhode not as bad as you think, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not, yeah. Well, New yeah, Jersey I'm, is definitely yeah. hell on earth. Massachusetts is Massachusetts and Connecticut are the worst ones here, I think. Yeah. Uh, well, well, New Jersey is definitely New, knew no better. Yeah, New York is yeah. right. Right yeah. On. Fuck yeah. New York. Fuck New Jersey. Fuck Massachusetts. <laughs> fuck Connecticut. Fuck and that entire North, region, man. The whole Northeast, except for New Hampshire, is so psychotically liberal. It's insane. <laughs> it Maine's, good. Maine's good, man. Oh yeah, Maine, Maine's pretty good. Uh, most of yeah, Vermont Maine is all right. Most of Vermont seems okay too. Better. I'm from Michigan. Personally, I'm I'm from Michigan, and uh, despite what you might hear, Michigan is fucking awesome as long as you stay away from Detroit. <laughs> Don't go anywhere near Detroit. Detroit is like a, an off branch of New Jersey or something. Just stay the fuck away from it. You know, it's like it's like a fucking uh, it's a zombie apocalypse. It's like there's a giant fence around it. Just just stay away. You know. Yeah. Other than Detroit, though, Michigan is fucking awesome. That sounds but, cool. You know what's funny? I've never been to Pork Fest, guys. I've been. Maybe. Wanting to go for like four or five years, and it's seriously only about an hour, hour and a half from me. Josh, oh, really? Josh, go next. John, John and I shared a campsite this past one. Just, just go next year. That's yeah, all I can. I, we don't need, we don't need yeah. to tell, tell you anything else. Just go We're next. Probably going to share a campsite again this year, and it's just going to be, dude. It's just going to be partying with with other liberty minded people for like Make, a week. Making making money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never, I've never been to Pork Fest either, man. I really need to go. Go this year, man. Yeah. Buy, buy your tickets in like April, April or May, and and you can get them for like, like, like forty, fifty bucks. It's just so awesome walking around a campsite with what two thousand other people, and just everywhere you look, it's just fucking black and yellow everywhere. Yep. Well, yeah. Yeah. The, the Constitution stuff is 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 not a part of it anymore. It's all ANCAPs and that that yeah. kind of, those kind of people. Man. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's, that, it's that, just black and yellow everywhere you look. The Agora Market is is one of the most beautiful things I've ever experienced in my entire life. Oh, it was awesome, dude. Even the food vendors were taking like silver and Bitcoin, like yeah, like, like selling you know, a cheeseburger for Bitcoin, like Bitcoin and silver. It was just. Just great. I mean, if you wanted to barter with ammo, you could do that. Anything, anything uh, went. Yeah. It was anything goes. It was the truest, freest market ever. We were carrying a three fifty seven and 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 others the whole time. It was it was sick. Wow. Oh yeah, I'd never dream of open carrying in Connecticut, even though I'm allowed to. Uh, no, it, well, you're allowed to, but if you do it, somebody's gonna call the cops. You're gonna be killed, man. Your daughter's gonna get a, a fucking grenade thrown into her crib. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Didn't they just uh, try to take all their guns away in Connecticut? Yeah, because of the Sandy Hook. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, you know what? Um, one of the guys, the guy who uh, he testified in front of uh, Congress, saying you know that they had no right to, to take his guns away. Yeah. They showed up at his house like a week later. They kicked in his fucking door, flashbanged him, took all his fucking guns and arrested him. They accused him of being mentally ill. None. It, it's on. It's on fucking YouTube. You can. It shows that the whole fucking raid is on YouTube. I mean, that's just daily, daily just us system. You know, yep. typical government shenanigans. Exactly. It's a just us. System. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't need to look that story up because I know. You know. I. I I've. I've been a. A party to things like that in my. In my life. And. and oh, yeah. yeah. The so more. The more I, cop I, stories I'm gonna look up, the worse I'm gonna think about them. And my. My. My opinion's already pretty. Pretty dirty as it is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've never been. Um. I've never been a part of. You know. Something that severe. But I've dealt with enough cops and you know the court system in my lifetime that I know it 
it has nothing to do with justice. It's it's about uh, who has the best connections, who has the most money. Money, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, man. I go. I, I do the child support thing, which which is one thing. But uh, I was I was rated like I don't know a year and a year and a month ago, or or, or something like that. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean. Uh, they didn't like fuck me up or throw grenades at me or any shit like that. I got punched in the face when I was in jail, but whatever. Um, yeah, but but I already hated the cops before that. I was already down with the cop lock stuff and, and and all that. You know, I was already filming police before that shit happened, and it just kind of solidified. Like I, I was kind of like, oh, you know, I I see all this police state stuff online, and I see all this checkpoint stuff online, but. It, I've only been like hit, punched by the cops like twice, and I generally deserved it or whatever. Uh, you know, this time was different, and I was already into all the the police state stuff or whatever. And uh, yeah, that kind of solidified it for me. Like, like eight eight armed cops came to my house basically because because I had a a, a debt based warrant, and I was in the midst of buying a gun. Like, I didn't have the gun yet. I just I put in like I had the background check to buy this rifle. Wow. And so the cops faced the raid on the fact that that some people when they register weapons already own them or some shit like that. When when clearly they could have just looked at the gun store records and where where the initial um background check came from to begin with. So wow. Yeah, it was crazy. It was it was crazy. Sorry to go off on like that tangent, but that's like my big, my my big, uh, my big police state experience or whatever. Yeah. Well, I've I've had a couple of my own, but sure. No, I've had my ass beat by cops as a kid and stuff, and and like when I was in the army, but I generally was like the antagonist at the time. I was at least up to some no good that was. Maybe involving a victim, but not in this not in this certain instance. Yeah. Well, um, on that beautiful note, I think I'm gonna wrap up the show. Honestly. Um, yeah, good stuff, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good um, stuff, man. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So you can catch Corey Hastings uh, at Ancom Logic. <laughs> uh, thank you, Corey. Uh, John from the New Sons, and, uh, New Sons and Daughters of Liberty. Thank you very much, John. Uh, oh, you're welcome, again. man. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Uh, Michael Freeman, Don't Tread on Anyone is his page. And uh, I swear you had a couple more. Well, I work with John a little bit on, on, on NSDL, but it's more, it's more his thing at this point. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Um, yeah, take care, everyone. Uh, you can watch us live uh, on Monday at uh, 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern. And, uh, yeah, please join us once again, and take care.